me out to the ball game. Swing, bada bada swing, bada bada swing. Swing, bada bada swing, bada bada swing, bada bada swing, yeah. Strike one. Hey, baby, do you come here often? Strike two. Hey, baby, now watch your sign. Next in line. Swing, better, better, swing, better, better, swing, better, better, swing. Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. We're getting ready to take on the Wingfield Falcons, the Pearl Pirates in region action here tonight. And this is a game for the Pearl Pirates. It's, uh, it's a really important game. It's a, it's a game that they're going to have to stay focused, play their game. One of the things I've heard coaches tell them, don't play against your opponent, play against yourself. And try to go out and do the best you can against yourself every game and play to the top of your potential and you'll be okay. And well, that's going to be the test tonight as they take on a Wingfield Falcon team that has not won a game this season. And they're 0-10 based on our Max Preps records. Not sure that's totally accurate, but I know they're 0-6 in region play. The Pirates have defeated them twice already this season, uh, both in 10-run rule games. They've also lost twice to Brookhaven uh, and twice to McComb, both of those in all of those in 10-run rule games. So the Pirates just need to focus, play their game tonight, go out and pick up win number five in region play and maintain that number one standing in Region 6 5A. Tonight, Justin Bennett will be joining me. We'll talk not only about this game tonight, but we'll also talk a little bit about possible playoff scenarios as we go through the night, as we get close to playoff time here in high school baseball. We're going to be back in a moment. We'll talk about tonight's game. We'll talk some of those playoff scenarios. Get ready for the starting lineups in the first pitch as you're watching Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Welcome back to Pro Pirate Baseball Live here on the Pirate Media Network. We're live at Pirate Park where the Pirates are getting ready to take on the Falcons of Wingfield High School. It'll be the final of the three-game series. They'll play against Wingfield in region play here in 2013. Pirates won the first two games, uh, 18 to nothing and 13 to nothing. One was here at Pearl High School, the other one at Levelwoods Park where Wingfield plays their home games. This will be the third and final game of the series. Joining me tonight to my left, my color commentary, Justin Bennett. Justin, good evening, and uh, look forward to a good game tonight. Absolutely. It should be a good game for the Pirates. They, uh, they played great on Saturday, stepped up outside of region play, really stepped in, settled in, played a good ball game. We saw two fantastic games from this ball club last week with two big wins over Brookhaven. Hopefully they'll be able to continue that tonight. And as you said, play against themselves and uh, play a smart baseball game here against Wingfield and come out on top tonight. The Pirates have an opportunity tonight, Justin, to win their fourth game in a row. Last year, they had a four-game winning streak. They've not had longer, they've not had another four-game winning streak or anything longer than four games since the 08-09 season. Wow. In the 08-09 season, they actually had a seven-game winning streak. There's an asterisk by that one because the first game of the winning streak was a forfeit. 
uh, against Canton, but then they won six in a row. So, but it's technically a seven-game winning streak, uh, but nothing longer than four since 08-09, and only once was that done, and that was last season. And so this year, that we did have a four-game winning streak uh, right before we went to spring break. Uh, the two games prior to spring break, a three prior to spring break, and the one at spring break, the first one got us to four and a chance to match that tonight and then with a game at Macomb Friday night and a game, a doubleheader Saturday. The Pirates have a chance this week uh, since 08-09 to, to set a new standard as far as winning streaks in baseball games. Yeah, you know, these guys need to step up and, and do just that. You know, they've come in, played really, really well, playing really good baseball, and I think they've got a great opportunity to set that and really to surpass that and continue to, to keep going if they'll stay focused and play their game. I was down on the field in the pregame earlier talking to Parker Thurman and Zach Carter. One of the things, that's what we were talking about, and Parker brought up the fact that uh, we have to remember to stay focused tonight. Uh, and as we've heard them talk about, and the coaches have talked about, and I mentioned in my opening, is don't play wing feet because you're going to play against a team tonight that, and again, I'm not, I don't mean to say this, taking anything away from Wingfield, but it's a team that just doesn't have the talent, doesn't have the facilities, doesn't have the equipment, just doesn't have what Pearl High School has when it comes to baseball team. Uh, the kids are going to get out there, they're going to try their best, but they're just not there. And if Pearl's not careful, these 15, 16, 17-year-old kids, and of course talking to Parker, he's an 18-year-old now, but talking to those kids, if you're not careful, you have a tendency to overlook that to, to lose your focus, to not stay on your game plan and do what you know you need to do and start playing them, and, and then you get sloppy. And, right. and you got to be careful of that because you can't afford to get sloppy before you go down to Macomb Friday night, before you go to Quitman on Saturday, before you come back next week and play some really good teams again. You've got to stay focused on this game. You absolutely have to stay focused, and that's, that's the toughest thing from a coach's standpoint to, to do with, with, with these kids. You know, it, it's to keep them focused against competition that might be struggling a little bit. You know, it's great. We opponent that, that's, that might be better than us. We can step up to the plate, play ball. We saw them do it with Northwest Rankin, and then we saw them struggle in the game afterwards against a team that they probably should have beaten. Right. And so you step up. You know, you played great last week against Brookhaven, a team that, that, that that's really good. You come out, you win, you step out here tonight, and you run that risk. So it's very, very important. It's very hard to do, but you got to stay focused, and you've got to continue to get better. Even against teams that, that might not be better, you as yourself, you as your team, have to continue to improve and get better game in and game out. One of the things, and I mentioned this to Parker Thurman and to Zach Carter, I said, and one of the keys to that happening Coaches can preach it all they want. That's right. But it's going to take guys like Parker and Zach to continue to, as leaders of this team, as seniors on this team, to drill that into these younger guys and help remind them that, hey, guys, come on, let's, let's stay on our game. Let's focus. Let's play the way we know we're supposed to play. No mercy. Let, let's put up as many runs as we can, as early as we can, as long as we're in this game until we see more players come in. But let's play to the top of our ability regardless of who our opponent is and make things happen. And I think leadership on the field from a couple of those guys is going to be critical in making that happen. Oh, it absolutely is. You know, you, everybody out here is learning. You've got some guys that have been on this field multiple times and, and, and may have a little more experience, but they're, they, they have the opportunity to, like you said, to teach these younger guys, to inspire these younger guys, and to step up and show them how, how you got to do it, you know, week in and week out, game in and game out, and hopefully that will continue as the season progresses. When I look at Wingfield's schedule, of course, they have 0-10 oh according to their schedule has been posted on Max Preps. Uh, we mentioned the two losses to Pearl, 13-0 and 18-0, both of those back on March 5th and March 8th. On the 19th and 22nd of March, they played Brookhaven. They lost 22-1 to both games. On the 26th and 29th, they played Macomb, lost 16 nothing and 24 nothing. So this is a hungry team, but also talking to their coach, uh, this is a team, he's got a lot of new guys. He said a lot of the guys that he had previously are gone. He's got a lot of young kids, uh, and Coach lantrop has got his work cut out for him. Right now they've got the plate meeting going on here behind home plate. So while that's going on, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll give you some starting lineups, have a national anthem, and get ready for the first pitch. The Pearl Pirates taking on the Wingfield Falcons right here on the Pirate Media Network. In times of joy, in moments of grief, we are there. When the world looks for truth, broadcasters come through, even when all else fails. 
Today, with more ways than ever to experience the moments that transform our lives, Americans still choose broadcast television and radio more than all other media combined. Television and radio are still the most trusted sources for news and entertainment. And our web and social sites are among the most visited sites in our daily lives. When important moments happen, both big and small, we're the first informers to history. We are the pioneers, the innovators, the local broadcasters of radio and television. Reaching more people, touching more lives. The Mississippi Braves. The Mississippi Braves 2013 baseball season is right around the corner. Don't miss all the excitement and action when the regular season begins on Thursday, April 4th. There's still some great seat locations for season tickets for all 70 home games or other ticket packages. Call the Trustmark Park box office at 888-BRAVES-4 or stop by the ballpark box office and reserve your season tickets, ticket packages, or individual game tickets right away. Opening night, April 4th, sponsored by the Mississippi Army National Guard. Make it every game. Mississippi Blood Services is connecting donors with the patients whose lives they've saved. John Matthew has blue rubber blood nevus syndrome, which causes him to need blood transfusions. Getting to meet a recipient is just unexplained. I think I made a friend for life, and John, he's a wonderful little kid. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for saving his life. When you give, he pulled down. Dial 888-902-5663 to save a life today. Baseball live here on the Pirate Media Network. We're just moments away from start tonight. And right now they're getting ready to introduce the lineups. I'm going to go ahead and give you the visiting team, the Wingfield Falcons. Leading off will be the pitcher, number one, Demarios Baber. Batting second in left field, number two, Isaiah Fleming. Batting third will be second baseman, number 17, Dante Smith. Batting fourth at first base, number 12, Patrick Mays. Batting fifth and catching, number five, Alonzo Roberts. Batting sixth, third baseman, number 22, Nigel Burns. Batting seventh, the shortstop, number 31, Colton Watson. And batting eighth, center fielder, number 16, Ja'Cory Tate. And rounding out the batting order for the Wingfield Falcons will be the right fielder, number eight, Aaron Freeman. They're coached by Coach Eric Lantrop, and they're getting ready to take on the Pearl Pirates tonight. Again, Wingfield looking for their first win here in 2013. A team that's struggling, got some decent athletes, but just really struggles uh, to try to get the right things going on the field. And tonight, that's who the Pirates will be taking on, trying to improve to 5-0 and in region play. In just a moment, our public address announcer here at Pirate Park will be introducing the Pearl Pirates, and when they do, we're going to go silent here in the booth and let you hear it from Eric McNair, our public address announcer here at Pirate Park. And now he's ready to go, so we're going to listen to him. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your Pearl Pirates in right field, Parker Berman. Center field, Zach Carter. In left field, Dalton Solis. Third base, Paxton Baum. Shortstop, Jimmy Boyd. Second base, Alex Hutton. First base, Dalton Sullivan. Catcher, Zach Prince. Pitcher Michael Goodson and the rest of the Pearl Pirates. There's the starting lineups for the Pearl Pirates. Now we're ready for the national anthem here at Pirate Park. They'll be back and we'll listen to that. Then we'll take a break and be back for the first pitch. Now the national anthem here at Pirate Park. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streamed.
is our national anthem for Pirate Park as the Pearl Pirates get ready to take on the Wingfield Falcons. We'll be back after these messages and your first pitch right here on the Pirate Media Network. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Sign Mart. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, Sign Mart is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at Sign Mart on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874 for all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs. You'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. We're ready to get underway. The Pirates and the Falcons of Wingfield High School. Let's set the defense for the Pearl Pirates. In left field, Dalton Solis. In center field, Zach Carter. And in right field is Parker Thurman. Around the infield, Paxton Bounds at third base. The shortstop is Jimmy Boyd at second base. Alex Hutton, first baseman Dalton Sullivan. Behind the plate, Zach Prince wearing a new number tonight, number 11. And on the mound, getting his start, Michael Goodson. And now we're ready to get underway. First pitch, grounded to the right side. Alex Hutton bobbles it, picks it up, throws it, and records out number one. And one pitch, one out, and when you're a pitcher, you love to see that. That's exactly what you want to see. Alex kind of bobbled it there, but a good job at recovering and getting it to first base in time to record out number one. First pitch was at 6.03. Now Isaiah Fleming steps into the batter's box, left fielder for the Falcons. Demarius Baber was the leadoff hitter. Swings and misses. Strike one. That pitch just misses high. One ball, one strike to count. Goodson's first appearance on the mound this season, so we have no pitching stats. He'll be creating them as we go tonight. That pitch right down the middle for a call strike. One ball, two strikes to count to Isaiah Fleming. And we have no stats for Wingfield at all. Nothing. Uh, of course, Max Preps is our source for most of our high school information for all the sports that we broadcast, whether it be football, basketball, baseball, even soccer and softball. But unfortunately, Wingfield doesn't use Max Preps. There's no rosters, no line, no stats, no anything on Max Preps. The only thing as part is their schedule. Anytime they play somebody, there's a call strike three. Uh, and the opponent puts in the game, the schedule, in other words. It, it, automatically it shows, shows up, on, up theirs. on theirs. Okay. And, and a one or a loss shows up on theirs. So if they played somebody that doesn't use oh, Max yeah. Preps, that's why I qualify that 10 re I 10 you. record. I if you. they play somebody that also didn't use Max Preps, it won't be in there. Dante Smith, second baseman, bats with two outs, takes a call strike on the inside part of the plate. We're just underway, if you're just now joining us. A beautiful evening here at Pirate Park. Wind blowing slight out of the south-southwest. Outside corner for a call strike. I'd say probably eight miles an hour, roughly, the wind as the flag's just gentle breeze on the flagpole beyond center field, some 365 feet away from home plate. Now the 0-2 delivery, swing and a miss, strike three, and one, two, three, go the Falcons in the top of the first. The Pirates will be coming to the bat in the bottom when we come back on the Pirate Media Network. 
Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. The Mississippi Braves. The Mississippi Braves 2013 baseball season is right around the corner. Don't miss all the excitement and action when the regular season begins on Thursday, April 4th. There's still some great seat locations for season tickets for all 70 home games or other ticket packages. Call the Trustmark Park box office at 888-BRAVES-4 or stop by the ballpark box office and reserve your season tickets, ticket packages, or individual game tickets right away. Opening night, April 4th, sponsored by the Mississippi Army National Guard. Make it every game. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. We're going to the bottom of the first inning. No scores. The Falcons went one, two, three in the top of the first. Let's set the defense for the Wingfield Falcons. In left field is number two, Isaiah Fleming. In center field, Ja'Cory Tate. And in right field is Aaron Freeman. Around the infield from third to first has Nigel Burns. At third, shortstop, Colton Watson. Second baseman, Dante Smith. At first base, Patrick Mays. Behind the plate, Alonzo Roberts. And on the mound, Demarius Baber. At your starting lineup defensively for the Falcons, a batting order for the Pirates will have Zach Carter leading off. He'll be followed by Alex Hutton, Parker Thurman, Dalton Solis, the first four. They'll be followed by Zach Prince, Dalton Sullivan, Paxton Bounds batting seventh, Jimmy Boyd batting eighth, and Michael Goodson rounding out the batting order for the Pearl Pirates. Justin, last night, as uh, Lieutenant James Thompson just entered our booth up here, we had a fun time as uh, there was a beauty pageant oh. last night here at Pearl High School <laughs> oh, in the yeah. Performing Arts Center. Okay. It was a fundraiser cool. uh, for the, I think it's six band members that qualified for the Lions All-State Band. Oh, yeah. You're familiar awesome. with that. and had a fundraiser for that. But as a part of that, some money was being donated to the Pearl uh, and Fire Police Memorial Pearl right. Police Department and Fire Department Memorial Funds. Okay. And uh, the contestants in this beauty pageant uh -huh. were Pearl policemen and firemen. There was a womanless beauty pageant. Wow. And, and I had the honor of emceeing that <laughs> event last night. <laughs> nice. Well, that's good. And uh, it was uh, now, now quite what, entertaining. Now, did Lieutenant Thompson participate? He did not. Oh, he, he, okay. he took pictures. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Zach Carter will be leading off for the Pirates. Zach hitting 298 on the season. And he'll be leading off facing Demarius Baber. First pitch misses outside for ball one. One ball, no strikes to count. Zach has six RBI on the season. Now the 1-0 pitch. Line back up the middle. Second baseman, great job to backhand. It comes up, throws to first in time to get Zach. Great play by the second baseman, Smith, to backhand the ball on what very well could have been a base hit up the middle and come up and make a throw. And a good shot he made to Mays at first to record out number one. And Alex Hutton comes to the batter's box. Alex hitting 206 on the season. Bats now with an out. Nobody on base here in the bottom of the first. No score. Takes the first pitch for a call strike on the outside part of the plate. But there were 12 contestants, uh, pretty evenly split between the police department and the fire department. And, and man, uh, that's great. They I really. Uh, the, the scary part about it, I actually think some of them really enjoyed. Uh. <laughs> that last night. I'm sure. And wow. And of course, I'm not going to name any names because right. should they be listening, they would might they might the be looking for my truck. And I <laughs> <laughs> one one pitch hit high in the air, left field, left fielder drifting over towards the line. It's deep. It's going to be over his head to the warning track. Hutton's rounding first, heading for second. Alex is going to hold up at second base with a stand up double on a high fly ball hit near about to the warning track down the left field line. Good piece of hitting there by Alex. Was able to extend his arms and drive the ball deep to left field. Good piece of hitting there. Puts him at second base with one out. Got to bring Parker Thurman. And I would say this to Alex's face, but that's probably about as far as Alex can hit a ball. <laughs> probably so. And, and, of course, his daddy works uh, in our trailer and runs our show, basically. He's our executive producer. And I would say this to Alex's face. He probably got all of that he, one. He probably did. He probably did. 
Alex not known for his power, but a good little ball player. At Parker Thurman hitting 355 on the season. Now he's got an opportunity to pick up his sixth RBI. If he can get a base hit, try to move Alex around from second base. Baber from the stretch. Now pitches. Just up and in for a ball. It's kind of interesting because the second baseman is, was standing on the bag much like a first baseman would. And by the time the pitcher threw it, if Parker went with a pitch to the opposite field, there's nobody at second base. <laughs> Leaves a huge hole in that side of the infield. Now he comes back to the bag again, standing much like a first baseman still there. Parker fouls it off right side. Out of play, one ball, one strike to count. Alex was going on the pitch, so let's see what Coach Barnett's got going on with his Pearl Pirates. Now, was there a winner of the uh, of the beauty pageant? There, there was. Huh. Her name was Felonious D. <laughs> okay. Was her stage name? Uh -huh, her stage name. I got gotcha. you. That pitch down in the dirt. Alex was going and is going to get a stolen base on the play. It's a two-ball, one-strike count. And Alex gets a stolen base. Uh, now Dave McCarley, uh, okay. officer for the Pearl Police Department. Uh, I think he's an inspector of some sort. Of, I forget what his title is. Investigator is what he is. He's an investigator for the Pearl PD. Uh, good guy. And uh, his, his talent was he played the drums. Had had brought a little snare drum and and, yeah. and actually I think the guy has got some band in his background. I got you. I uh, got you because he played those drums pretty good. Now the three one pitch misses up for ball four. Parker draws a walk. That'll bring Dalton Solis to the plate with runners at first and third. One out here in the bottom of the first inning. Pearl versus Wingfield. Batting for the Pirates, left fielder number 22, Dalton Solis. Been really impressed with Dalton. Done well at the plate, getting better every game in left field. Becoming a great player here for the Pearl Pirates. Hitting 375. Parker goes on the first pitch, a call strike on the inside part of the plate. Parker will get the stolen base, his sixth of the season. That gives... Dalton an opportunity with runners at second and third with one out to try to drive in a couple of runs here in the bottom of the first for the Pirates. Now the old one pitch hits him in the back. He'll take his base, and that'll load the bases for Zach Prince. I know you were doing the Atlanta Braves game Saturday. On Saturday. Right, I was. You, By the way, that was a blast. Was it? 8,217 at Trustmark Park. Man, that's awesome. That is awesome. But anyway, yes, I was. But as a former catcher, you would have been proud of Mr. Prince really? on Saturday. Three big outs to end threatening innings started with Zach Prince behind the plate. Awesome. First pitch over his head all the way to the backstop. Here comes Alex Hutton to the plate. And he'll stand up as he crosses the plate. And both other runners will advance on the wild pitch. And that puts the Pirates on the board here in the bottom of the first inning. One to nothing. Solis at second. Parker Thurman at third with Zach Prince at the plate with a one ball, no strike count. So was it like caught stealings? No, was it, like, uh, like uh, the one was a two, four, three caught stealing, try, double rundown. steal rundown kind I got of you. thing. Um, the other 1-0 -oh pitch misses inside two balls no strikes account the other was a caught stealing at third base okay and um, I can't remember the last one but but just a phenomenal play phenomenal play from, from Zach behind the plate just uh, really really stepped up in some key situations for the Pirates 2-0 -oh pitch chopped foul on the third baseline on what very well could have been ball three the pitch was kind of in on his fist but Zach tried to turn on it and drive it, fouls it off towards the third base coach's box. Coach Barnett grabs it and tosses it back in. Two balls, one strike to count to Zach Prince. Hitting 227. Two runners on base trying to drive them in. Two one pitch. Misses inside. Ball three. Three balls, one strike to count. Did you get to meet any uh, – you met Don Sutton, I'm assuming. I did. Didn't spend a lot of time. Spent a lot of time. Did talk to Ben Ingram a good bit. Yeah. Good. Uh, did get a chance to meet Don Sutton. 
Uh, a lot of the other personnel from the Atlanta Braves, of course, there. Uh, from John Sherholtz, who's the president of the Braves. Frank Wren, the general manager that balls in the dirt. Was Bobby Cox bases. there? Bobby Cox was the manager of the uh, future stars. Cool. Uh, and it was really one of the, the neatest things. And we're going to get a courtesy runner for the catcher. And I think that's going to be Ty Jenkins. It is. He'll be the courtesy runner for Zach Prince. Uh, one of the neatest things, of course, I got to introduce everybody and, you know, call out all the names of all the Atlanta Braves. Uh, Dalton Sullivan steps into the batter's box, hitting 316. Bases loaded, one out here in the bottom of the first. First pitch, misses inside for a ball. Some 20 minutes or so before game time, they, they just get players are milling around doing warm-up stuff, and uh, Bobby Cox just walks from the clubhouse down along the field, around behind home plate, and around to the, the visitors' dugout where the future stars were. I didn't say anything. I didn't introduce him. Just, I mean, he's just walking by. Mm -hmm. But the fans recognized him, of course, and who he was and what he's meant to the Atlanta Braves in the game of baseball. And he received a standing ovation cool. with awesome. no introduction, no nothing, just, just because he walked by. Wow. And, and that was cool just to sit there and watch that, watch the fans, watch the fans show their appreciation uh, for the legendary manager for the Atlanta Braves. And so that, that, was, that was neat. That's cool. Two balls, one strike to Dalton Sullivan. Bases loaded, one out here in the bottom of the first. And that pitch all the way over everybody into the backstop. Here comes Parker Thurman will score uncontested. And it'll be three balls, one strike to Dalton Sullivan. A second wild pitch that has scored a run. Alex Hutton also scored on a wild pitch. Pirates only have one hit in the inning. That was a double by Alex Hutton deep down the left field line. A leadoff ground out by Zach Carter on a hard-hit ball with a fantastic play by the second baseman, Dante Smith. Since then, Babers had a lot of trouble finding the strike zone. Popped up by Sullivan back in the backstop, chasing it, and can't make the play. Is the catcher, Alonzo Roberts, and that's what happens with a ball hit like that. It starts spinning and circling, and the biggest mistake Roberts made, he tried to circle with it. Right. And your best bet when it's highlighted like to get away from it figure it out, and then come into it and make the it. catch. But he's just started circling with it and just couldn't find the, the right spot to be. Full count for Dalton Sullivan with bases loaded. Excuse me, second and third in the dirt. That's going to send him to first base on the walk. And as it bounces away and goes to the backstop, scoring will be easily. And Sullivan's going to head down to second base, which it's legal. They didn't pay attention to him, so he'll keep on running. So it's going to be a wild pitch. And that's going to allow the runner to score. Jenkins down. goes to third. third and on that same play, Paxton Dalton Bounds. Sullivan advances to third. So now the Pirates lead three to nothing. And Paxton Bounds comes to the plate with one out. Runners at second and third. Hits the first pitch. He sees softly over ahead of the second baseman into shallow right center field. One run's going to score. Here comes Sullivan coming to the plate. And he's going to score on the two RBI single by Paxton Bounds. Great piece of hitting there by Bounds. Since it just over the head of the second baseman, guys running on contact, easily scoring. Gives the Pirates a 5 nothing lead. Jimmy Boyd, shortstop, coming to the plate. Number eight hitter in the batting order. We're in the bottom of the first. Pirates now lead 5 nothing. Bounds with his lead at first. Takes off on the first pitch. Is this fouled off by Jimmy Boyd? So Paxton will have to retreat to first base. Now at the game, everybody played a little bit. Is that kind of how the how it worked? The the starters played for about five innings for oh, the okay. Atlanta Braves. Starting pitcher Mike Miner went four innings and okay. then gave way to Craig Kimbrell and then Eric Flaherty and pitched a couple other guys. Uh, Luis Avalon got in the game, who was here a couple of years ago. Uh, but the starting pitcher four innings, and most of the rest of the starters, most of them went five innings. And then everybody else came in and played at some point. Got, you know, the right. entire roster got on the field. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch. Bounds retreats to the bag as the pitcher, Baber, steps off the rubber. Now, and, and pretty much the same with the minor league organization, the, the future stars. Pretty much everybody got in the game to play. Bounds goes. Lined foul down the third baseline. Now of the future stars that you, that you were able to see, will, how many of those will you think will be here this year? Uh, ten of them. Oh, wow, okay. Are here. Okay. I mean, the, the roster has been announced for here. Ten of them are here, uh, the, which is a pretty good representation. We're 24, yeah. so almost half of them were double-A players. 
Ground ball back to the pitcher. Baber bobbles it, picks it up. He's going to throw to first. He will get the out. Jimmy Boyd at first base. And Bounds will advance to second on the play. Looks like he wanted to try to pick it up and throw it to second, get that force there. But he bobbled as he got in his glove and couldn't make that play. So with two outs, Michael Goodson comes to the batter's box. Runner at second base. Pirates lead 5-0 here in the bottom of the first. Goodson, the ninth batter to come to the plate. Bounds a huge lead, goes no throw as he'll steal third uncontested. Goodson with a 1-0 count. Swings and misses, foul tips, just a piece of it on the inside fastball. Count goes one ball, one strike. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch at the knees for a call strike. One ball, two strikes to count to Michael Goodson. The Pirates batting around here in the bottom of the first. Goodson the ninth batter in the order. Zach Carter, the leadoff hitter, on deck. He would love to get another chance. He had a hard ball, but the second baseman again made a great play on it. There's a ball, slow roller down the third baseline. Third baseman Burns picks it up. Can't make a play. And that's going to be a base hit for Michael Goodson. That was going to be a tough one to play if he's able to get there, and he wasn't. So Goodson will get the single and the RBI, and Zach Carter comes back to the plate for the second time here at the bottom of the first. Pirates able to bat around so far here in the first inning. Six runs on three hits. Now the first pitch to Zach well outside for ball one. Again, Zach grounded out to second on a hard-hit ball that I thought was going to get through the gap. But the second baseman, Dante Smith, a great job to backhand it, square his shoulders up, and throw it over to Patrick Mays at first to record the out. Now the 1-0 delivery. Line drive up the middle for a base hit. No doubter on that one. Goodson rounding second, heading for third. And he'll stand up at third base. Interesting left Michael Goodson on running for himself going to mention that. Didn't put in a courtesy runner for the pitcher in that situation. Now Alex Hutton batting left-handed in this at-bat. Alex going to try a little runners. switch hitting Number five, Alex. Uh, with okay. runners at first and third. Two outs here in the bottom of the first. Well outside for a ball. Uncontested stolen base for Zach Carter. Hutton will switch it up. I've not seen Alex bat from this side of the plate. We'll see what he's able to do. 1-0 pitch. Chopper to the right side. Second baseman's going to have a tough play. Picks it up. Tosses to first just in time to get the out. Alex makes contact but unable to get it hard enough to get it past anybody. Nonetheless, the Pirates will pick up six runs on four hits. No errors. Two men left on base. We played one. Pearl leads 6-0. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. In times of joy, in moments of grief, we are there. When the world looks for truth, broadcasters come through, even when all else fails. Today, with more ways than ever to experience the moments that transform our lives, Americans still choose broadcast television and radio more than all other media combined. We are the local broadcasters of radio and television. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. We're going to the top of the second inning. Pearl leading 6-0 over Wingfield. Pirates put 10 runners, 11 runners to the plate in the bottom of the first. Able to plate six runs out of it. And now we'll go to the top of the second. It'll be Patrick Mays, Alonzo Roberts, Nigel Burns, the three scheduled hitters for the Wingfield Falcons. 
placing Michael Goodson. Patrick Mays, big first, first baseman, baseman wears number 12. Steps into the batter's box against Goodson. Hits it well to right field. Parker Thurman comes in, though, and will make the catch to record the out as he was fighting the sun. And another one pitch, one out for the pitcher, Goodson, and that'll bring Alonzo Roberts, the catcher, to the plate. It's two of those for Goodson. You like that as a pitcher. If you can just throw one and get one out, you'll do that all night. Alonzo Roberts. Roberts, the catcher, steps into the batter's box. Goodson getting his sign from the catcher, Zach Prince. Now the pitch. Up and in over the head of Roberts. Ball one. Fastball just missing the outside part of the plate. Two balls, no strikes to count. You and I, this will be our only broadcast this week, right? For you and I, that is correct. Uh, there will be another game Friday night. Swing and a miss, strike one. Two balls, one strike to count. The Pirates will finally get a much-anticipated, long-awaited matchup against Macomb as we've had two games postponed against the Tigers. 2-1 pitch, swings and a miss, strike two, 2-2 two, two to count. It'll be at Macomb Friday night. You will be in Memphis. Uh, I'll be out of town. Singing. Are you singing in the wedding? You just, 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 attending. just attending a wedding. Uh, strike three called at the knees. And with two outs, that'll bring Nigel Burns to the plate. I will be announcing the second game of the 70-game home season for the Mississippi Braves on a Friday night fireworks night. And so Greg Flynn will be handling the play-by-play -play duties. Line drive straight back to Goodson. Feels it, drops it on the mound, and jogs to the dugout. And three up, three down, go the Falcons here in the top of the second. We played one and a half. Pearl leads 6 nothing. back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. It was once called East Jackson, but the city of Pearl's been coming into its own ever since then. The folks at the Pearl Chamber of Commerce are proud of their city and want to give you just a few facts to consider. For instance, its commitment to excellence in education with Pearl's Public Schools and the Rankin Branch of Hines Community College. It's a community whose people are grounded in faith and family. Consider Pearl's political contributions. Ray Rogers and Dean Kirby in the state legislature and U.S. Congressman Greg Harper's district headquarters in his hometown of Pearl. It's become a handsome east entrance to the metro area on I-20 with shopping places like Bass Pro and the new Sam's Club and Trustmark Park, home of the Mississippi Braves. The state fire academy is in Pearl, and so is the state headquarters of MEMA and other government agencies. The newly elected slate of city officials is excited about Pearl and making it an even better place. It's come a long way from being just a quaint little neighborhood east of Jackson. The city of Pearl, a city creating its own future. Hometown Spotlight is sponsored by the Pearl Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. We're going to the bottom of the second. Pearl leading 6-0 over the Falcons of Wingfield. For the Pirates here in the bottom of the second, it'll be Parker Thurman. Dalton Solis, Zach Prince, and if one of those should reach, Dalton Sullivan, the first scheduled hitters. As Baber completes his warm-up tosses, Parker Thurman in his last at bat walked and scored. Pirates picked up four hits in the top of the first. Alex Hutton got the double second hitter of the inning, then a single by Paxton, let's see, who would hit the singles? Uh, Dalton Sullivan, Paxton Bounds, and then Zach Carter. It's not Dalton, Paxton Bounds, Michael Goodson, and Zach Carter. Maybe we'll get the right columns in my spreadsheet. Now Parker Thurman steps to the batter's box. Takes the first pitch high for a ball. One ball, no strikes to count. Well hit ball, left center field. Center fielder chasing it. It'll be one hop to the wall. Rounding first, heading for second. He's going to round second, heading for third. And he's going to stand up at third base with a leadoff triple 
by Parker Thurman on a hard hit ball that landed near the warning track, took a short hop into the fence and deep left center field, about 350 some odd feet away from home plate. A great piece of hitting there. That'll bring Dalton Solis to the plate. Was hit by a pitch his first at bat. He's got a runner at third base with nobody out here in the bottom of the second. That pitch in for a call strike. No balls, one strike to count. We were talking between innings. Michael Goodson, the leadoff starting pitcher for today for the Pirates, through two innings has thrown 16 pitches, 12 strikes, two balls, three strikeouts. Now the 0-1 pitch hits in the back. Dalton Solis for the second time. He jogs down to first base, and uh, I was going to say he's going to say something to his first base coach, but we have no first base coach at the moment. And so he's going to have to keep his gloves on. He could ask Carol Davis, our camera operator over there, uh, hey, do I have a target on my back or something? That's twice he's been hit pretty much the same spot. Zach Prince walked his first at bat, steps into the batter's box. Runner goes, pitches high for a ball. Puts runners at second and third with nobody out. One ball, no strikes to count. Six nothing, Pirates lead. Now the 1 0 pitch. Low for a ball, two balls, no strikes. We're talking about Michael Goodson. And of course, you know you got three strikeouts. You got to throw at least nine pitches to get the three strikeouts. Right. So of the six outs, he's only thrown seven more pitches to get the other three outs. Wow. So that's pretty impressive. Pitch is high for ball three. Three balls, no strikes to count. So early in this game, Goodson trying to stake his game to our PMN player of the game. Today will be brought to you by Sonic and Moss Creek Fish House. And uh, he's an early contender for our defensive player of the game. Up and in for ball four. And Zach Prince walks on four pitches. Looking to see if we see Todd Jenkins come out. And I did not. Number 26, first so I guess give that Prince run for himself Sullivan. for a little bit. Dalton Sullivan steps into the batter's box. Pops up the first pitch into foul ground, chasing it as a catcher, and it's going to bounce off the fence. He won't get there. Lands safely in foul territory. No balls, one strike to count. Bases loaded, nobody out for Dalton Sullivan. Again, following the game, we will award our PMN players of the game as we talk to them, as well as head coach Kevin Barnett. Now the 0-1 pitch. Again, poked foul, right side, first baseman chasing into foul ground, can't make the catch as he dives into the warning track fart. It'll be a no ball, two strike count. Parker Thurman said, I'm gonna come to the plate. Umpire says, no, you're not. Turn around and go back. (laughs) Now, if he had caught it. He could. He could tag and go. That's right. As long as he makes sure he didn't leave the bag before the ball was caught, he could tag up and go. Now Sullivan once again, 0-2 count. Strikes out, swinging on three pitches, two foul offs and a swing and a miss and an inside pitch. That'll bring Paxton Bounce to the plate. He singled his first at bat. Batting for the Pirates, number 27. Third base, base umpires asking them to move the bats that are propped up in the front of the dugout area. So they'll get that back on the other side of the little fence. And now Paxton Bounds steps into the batter's box. Runners at second and third with one out here in the bottom of the second. First pitch to Bounds. Again, fouled off right side out of play. Count goes no balls, one strike. But Friday night, the Pirates will get that long-awaited, much-anticipated game against the Macomb Tigers. They'll turn around and play them twice next week on Thursday and Friday to round up the three-game series. In between that, they'll play Brookhaven for the third and final game Tuesday night. So that's right. a lot of baseball over the next week and a half for the Pearl Pirates. This game tonight, then, of course, Friday night, then a doubleheader Saturday at Quitman, then a single game Tuesday, a game Thursday, Friday, and Saturday next week. So the Pirates' schedule is full. And Paxton Bounds will be hit by the pitch, take his base. And with the bases loaded, that brings Parker Thurman to the plate. And the Pirates now lead 7-0 for Jimmy Boyd as he steps to the batter's box. 
Jimmy grounded out back to the pitcher, his first at bat. Now the first pitch, swung on, hit in the air towards second baseman. Should be infield fly rule. That is called, so runner, the batter is out. Runners do have an opportunity or an option to advance after the catch, just like a tag on an outfield ball. But with the first baseman catching it, paying attention, nobody goes anywhere. And now with two outs, that'll bring Michael Goodson to the plate. Singled his last at bat. First pitch misses down and away. Here comes a runner to the plate and will score on the wild pitch. Gets away from the pitcher momentarily, but Prince retreats to the bag. Nobody was at the plate. Had Zach wanted to try to score, he might have had an opportunity really to get there because the catcher was still back here near the backstop. 8 nothing. Pirates lead. One ball, no strike count to Goodson. Prince now taking his lead at third base. And that one hits Goodson in the back. He'll take his base after being hit by the pitch. It's the fourth hit batter for the pitcher, Demarius Baber. And that'll bring Zach Carter to the plate. Zach one for two, bounded out to second and single so far tonight. Carter. Love to see Zach get something out to left or right center field. Now the first pitch, swings and misses. As he was trying to drive one, just wasn't able to make contact. Winfield plays even at the bag at first and third. Normal depth at second and short. Popped up left side in play. Third baseman drifts into foul ground and can't make the play as he drops it. So Zach Carter will come back. They landed in foul territory. One of those we could charge a pop fly foul error, but I'm not going to do it. Zach will step back into the batter's box with an 0-2 count. Now the 0-2 pitch for Carter. Misses inside for a ball. One ball, two strikes a count. And in defense of that no call, legitimately, you don't have to call that at this point. Right, because you if don't If Zach were to make an out, you don't even have to charge that error. Right. Some official scores, look, it, it's a judgment thing with that. Uh, I've heard some managers won't it call, period. Others will let it go with that if he doesn't actually advance a runner or let, let him get on base. Now, if Zach were to get a base hit, in most respects, you should go back and charge that. However, I don't think he touched the ball. I don't think he did either. I, I think it actually missed his glove, which makes it even tougher to call the error. 2-2 pitch. Zach hits it well towards center field, but the center field is able to get there and make the catch and record out number three. So if you try, it wouldn't be the area anyway there in my book. There's right. nothing advanced on it. So Zach Carter flies out the end of the inning, but the Pirates pick up two more runs on one hit. Three men left on base. We play two. Pearl leads 8 nothing. back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. We've got some 
wholesale changes going on by the Pearl Pirates as they're changing out a lot of the uh, first stringers. Uh, and we'll try to get to those for you in just a moment. Kenny Thomas is going to be the new catcher. Uh, the new pitcher is Lawrence, Nick Lawrence. And we'll try to get all the rest of it for you in just a moment. I think we've got them all now. The only two looks like stayed out there was Jimmy Boyd and Paxton Bounds. So let's set the defense for you now for the Pearl Pirates. In the outfield, Todd Jenkins now playing left field. The center fielder is Oren Myrick. Right fielder is Phelan Smith. Paxton Bounds is still at third base. Jimmy Boyd still at second base. New, uh, third, uh, shortstop, excuse me. New second baseman is Tyler Oliver. The new first baseman is Hunter Allen. Uh, I didn't get that. Am I got to get that one? Hunter Allen now at first base. And the new catcher is Kenny Thomas. And the new pitcher, Nick Lawrence. That's your changes for the Pearl Pirates. As seven of the nine position players have been changed out. Wow. And that will now batting is Colton Watson. And we're assuming that they took everybody's batting order. That, that they just changed them out, and everybody kept the same batting order by position, which is something which is really what you have to do for the most part, unless you just want to really go crazy with it. Colton Watson now the shortstop steps in facing Nick Lawrence. First pitch by Nick, swing and a miss for strike one. That'll close the book on Michael Goodson. He'll go two innings, no hits, no runs. No walks, three strikeouts, 16 pitches, 12 strikes, four balls. Swing and a miss for strike two. And technically speaking, here again, by National Federation of High School rules, he can't get the win because you got to go four innings to get a That's win. That's right. However, if this stays like this, we're going to probably let him have it. He earned it. Call strike three, three pitches, three out, and an out, and that will bring Ja'Cory Tate to the batter's box. He did a great job pitching. Outstanding job. Field, center fielder, number 16, Ja'Cory Tate. Now Ja'Cory Tate steps into the batter's box. Takes the first pitch for a call strike. Swing and a miss at strike two. And what I really am liking right now is the Pirate pitchers are just coming out and throwing – throwing strikes. Don't get fancy. Don't try to do anything really crazy. Just throw strikes and, and let them put it in play if they can. That pitch misses high for a ball. One ball, two strikes to count. Yeah, put it up there. Let them hit it if they can and, and just keep the ball in the strike zone. That's exactly what you want to do. One, two pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Two batters, two strikeouts for Nick Lawrence. Now to bring Aaron Freeman, the right fielder, to the plate. Now, once again, in the defense of, of these Wingfield players, I was talking to the coach, most of these guys we're seeing are freshmen and sophomores. They're, they're young kids that uh, are in over their head, so to speak. Right. But right now they're playing against freshmen and sophomores for the Pearl Pirates as well. That pitch hits him on the left arm, and that will be the first base runner for the Wingfield Falcons. And it's by way of the hit by pitch. The pitcher, number one, Demarius Baber. First pitch to Baber misses up for a ball. One ball, no strikes to count. That pitch high for a ball, too. 2-0 two the count to Demarius Baber. When you look at this defense right now for the Pirates, Hunter Allen at first is a freshman. Ty Jenkins is a freshman. Michael Goodson, the starting pitcher, was a freshman. Paxton Bounds is a sophomore. Phelan Smith is a sophomore. Nick Lawrence, the pitcher, is a freshman. He goes to a 3-0 count. Uh, Kenny Thomas, the catcher, is a freshman. Tyler Oliver, second baseman, is a freshman. Or Myrick in center field is a sophomore. There's a call strike on the inside part of the plate. Uh, now, of course, Jimmy Boyd's a senior at shortstop, but the third baseman uh, is uh, a sophomore as well, Paxton Bounds. So. A young group of guys on the field right now. And he's changing bats with a 3-1 count. 
Don't know what was up with that, but all of a sudden decided I got the wrong bat. Now the 3-1 pitch from Lawrence. Swings and miss. Strike two. Two outs here in the top of the third. Falcons get their first base runner on a hit by pitch by Nick Lawrence. The only blemish, if you will, by Pirate pitchers. That one's fouled off. Now the 3-2 pitch hit foul over the head of our first base camera operator, Carol Davis, as he was ducking in behind that camera. He needs to protect the camera. I'll be ducking behind it. 3-2 pitch, strike three, and the Maris Baber go down on strikes, and we've played two and a half. Pearl leads 8-0 back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874 for all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs. You'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Sign Mart. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, Sign Mart is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at Sign Mart on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. We're going to the bottom of the third inning with Pearl leading Wingfield by a score of eight to nothing. For the Pirates here in this half inning, it'll be Tyler Oliver, Phelan Smith, and Todd Jenkins. And if one of those should reach, Kenny Thomas will be the fourth batter in the order. Pirates trying to improve to 5-0 and in region play and trying to win four games in a row for only the second time this season and only the third time since 08-09. They'll try to do it here against Wingfield, and then if they could pick up a win against Macomb Friday night, that five would be the longest win streak since 08-09. Win both of a doubleheader Saturday, and they'll tie the longest win streak dating back to 08-09. Tyler Oliver steps into the batter's box for the first time tonight, looking for his first hit here in 2013. Takes the first pitch inside for ball one. One ball, no strikes to count. In fact, Tyler's first at bat as a varsity player. Now the 1-0 pitch. Catches the outside part of the plate for a call strike. One ball, one strike to count to Tyler Oliver. We got timeout call trying to keep the players in the dugout. Here on the Pirate bench. Coaches can be outside the edge, but the players can't. 1-1 one, one pitch up and in for ball two. Two balls, one strike to count. And some of those varsity starters have done their two innings of work, inning and a half of work, and now they're wanting to get out there and watch, and they forget they got to stay inside the dugout. That's right. It's not practice. Trying to keep everybody safe. Now the 2-1 pitch hits him. He'll take his base after being hit by a pitch. Fifth hit batter by Baber tonight. That'll bring Phelan Smith, the right fielder, to the batter's box. Wind has died completely as the sun is set here at Pirate Park. Falling in behind a cloud to our west. It's not sunsets yet, but it's completely hidden. Baber steps off the rubber, and Oliver retreats to the bag. Goes on the first pitch, ground ball up the middle for a base hit in the center field. Rounding second, heading for third is Oliver. 
And it's going to be a single by Phelan Smith. And Oliver will stop at third base. That'll bring Ty Jenkins, the left fielder, to the plate. Now we are going to get a first base coach. First pitch to Jenkins, swings and misses, strike one. No balls, one strike to count. It's good to get these guys in, give them some game time experience. A few uh, live pitching opportunities at the plate. Phelan Smith going before the pitcher even did anything. Ground ball right side, second baseman bobbles it, picks it up, throws to first, not in time. Goes past the first baseman of the dugout. Heading for second is Jenkins. They're going to throw down there, but he's going to be safe. It's going to be an error on the second baseman. Oliver scores on the play. Smith stops at third. That pitch low and away. Good job by the catcher to block it up. Nine nothing now the Pirates lead. Kenny Thomas at the plate. Hitting 167. Limited playing time. Now the 0 1 pitch hit high in the air. Center field. Center fielder coming in. Now backing up. Drifting. Gets there. Makes a catch. Runner's going to tag and score. So it'll be a sack fly. He'll get the RBI. Jenkins will advance to third on the play. And the Pirates now lead 10 0. And Hunter Allen steps into the batter's box. Outfield shifts drastically for Allen. The center fielder moving all the way to right center. They believe Allen's going to pull the ball where they're going. If he hits it into center field or anywhere to the left half of center field, he can run till Lamar. <laughs> he really can. A true left-handed batter. Now the 1-0 pitch. High and away for ball two. Two balls, no strikes to count. Now the 2-0 pitch. Low for ball three. Three and 0 the count. Paxton bounds in the on deck circle. Wings at a 3-0 pitch. Gave him the green light, and he fouled it back to the backstop. Don't know that that pitch was good enough to swing at with a 3-0 count. Even if you got I the green light, so. it was a little off the plate on the outside part. You're not going to be able to drive that one anywhere. But I guess when coach gives you green light on a 3-0 count, it's kind of hard to lay off. Now the 3-1 pitch. Lays off of that, takes ball four. And that puts runner at first and third for Paxton Bounds. Paxton with an opportunity to vie for our offensive player of the game because most of the rest of the guys that started are out. That's right. He and Jimmy Boyd, the only ones going to get many at bats. Paxton's one for one with three RBI, a stolen base, scored a run, been hit by a pitch. Hunter Allen turns and just jogs down to second base. So even before a pitch is thrown, he's going to steal second. <laughs> the pitcher not even working from a stretch to hold him on. Now the first pitch to Paxton, low for a ball. It's going to be interesting to see how long Coach Barnett gives his guys the green light. Right. At what point does he hold them up, just go station to station from the plate, take the bases one at a time, and just kind of call off the dog, so to speak. High and away for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Of course, it's 10 nothing. You want to make sure that you keep a 10-run lead to where you can end the game in five. So a lot of times you'll go ahead and go to 12 or 13 runs, to give yourself a little bit of a cushion, a cushion in case there. you make a mistake and give up a run or two. 2-0 -oh pitch, hit into the air, right field. Should be good enough for a sack fly anyway. Retreating to the bag is Jenkins. He's going to tag up, head to the plate, and he will score easily on the sack fly to right. Runner's going to head to third on the throw and dropped by the third baseman. He would have been safe. But it'll be a sack fly to right. Jenkins will score, and Hunter Allen's going to advance on the play. And that makes it 11 nothing the ball game. And Jimmy Boyd coming to the batter's box. Bounds does pick up another RBI. That's four RBI. Still one for one because the sack fly didn't count against you. But four RBI, four RBI night, that's a good one for any player. 
First pitch by to Jimmy Boyd, fouled off. No balls, one strike to count. Nick Lawrence in the on deck circle for the Pirates. Now the 0 1 pitch, fouled off right side. Now, here's, a, here's another potential problem here for the Pirates is you're facing this kind of pitching. You're not going to see this pitching Friday no, night you're not, or you're Saturday. Not. And so you can't get too caught up into the pace of these pitches because it's, it's not what you want to see. 0-2 pitch, fouled off, right side's going to get out of play. Count remains, no balls, two strikes. As that one lands in the almost empty Wingfield bleachers. There are two people over there that I can see. And I think one of those is the bus driver. <laughs> Now the 0-2 pitch. Soft line drive. Second baseman can't make the play as it goes by him in the right field. Jimmy's going to get a base hit on the play as the second baseman just flat misplayed it. But he didn't touch it. It was a soft line drive. He could figure out whether to catch it in the air or to short hop it. And it turns out to be a base hit. Seventh hit of the night for the Pirates. And Nick Lawrence, the pitcher, gets his first plate appearance. Boyd again goes to second. On the pitch, as Baber not even holding him on. Oren Myrick in the on deck circle for the Pirates. And once again, he's going to head to third without a pitch, without the pitcher holding him on. And at this point, I'd kind of, you know, you kind of get to a point here you want to see coach just say, all right, guys, just, just hold up. Right. We're leading 12 0. Uh, there's no sense, you know, rubbing it in the face. Well hit ball, left field, left fielder though straight to him and will sit there and make the catch and record out number three. That'll end the inning, before the, but the Pirates pick up four more lead, 12 nothing after three. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. In times of joy, in moments of grief, we are there. When the world looks for truth, Broadcasters come through, even when all else fails. Today, with more ways than ever to experience the moments that transform our lives, Americans still choose broadcast television and radio more than all other media combined. Television and radio are still the most trusted sources for news and entertainment. And our web and social sites are among the most visited sites in our daily lives. When important moments happen, both big and small, we're the first informers to history. We are the pioneers, the innovators, the local broadcasters of radio and television, reaching more people, touching more lives. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. We've got some more changes. We're trying to sort that out real quick. Hayden Moore, now the new pitcher. Nick Lawrence moved to shortstop. And we're looking to try to make sure that's the only change. Paxton Bounds is still at third base. It looks like everybody else the same. Hunter Allen still at first. I said Lawrence moved to shortstop. Second baseman still Tyler Oliver. Kenny Thomas still behind the plate. Phelan Smith, Oren Myrick, and Ty Jenkins still in the outfield. So Isaiah Fleming will lead off the top of the fourth for the Wingfield Falcons. First pitch misses inside. One ball, no strikes to count. Moore with a sidearm Isaiah delivery. Fleming. Coming around towards the third base side of the bag. 1-0 count. Well outside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes to count to Isaiah Fleming. So far, we're seeing multiple pitchers for the Pirates, which is what you want to do in a game like this. Give some guys some time on the mound against another team besides your inner squads. Now the 3-0 pitch. Catches the outside corner for a call strike. Nope. Yeah, at first I thought he was thinking, Fleming thinking he drew the walk, but the umpire said, nope, I called that a strike. Lawrence uh, Moore is the first pitcher that's coming in, having trouble finding the strike zone, gets a swing and a miss, strike two. 
Both Goodson and Moore came in throwing strikes in a hurry. Now the 3-2 pitch. Call strike three. Went 3-0 and came back and got him looking and records a strikeout. That'll bring Dante Smith to the batter's box. Smith struck out the first time up. That's the seventh strikeout for Pirate Pitching. The only base runner that we've had tonight for the Wingfield Falcons reached by way of being hit by the pitch. Second baseman Dante Smith now stepping into the batter's box. Takes the first pitch outside. And, and again, I, I think, Justin, you hit the nail on the head. Is uh, Moore's having a little bit of trouble with that sidearm delivery, finding the strike zone at this point. He really is. The sidearm, he's a sidearm thrower, and it's either going way outside one way or way outside the other. 2-0 the count now. Takes this one 3-0 the count now on Dante Smith, the second baseman. That ball hits the outside corner, takes it three and one. It's good to get live game action, as you said. That ball right in there for a strike as well. Brings it full three and two. Live game action better than just inner squad sometimes, so it's good to give him the opportunity 3-2 swing and a miss, strike three. So the second batter he's faced in the inning, he, he falls behind. You know, I'd like to see him throw strikes <laughs> earlier in the count. Me too. <laughs> you know, he went 3-0 to both batters. Both batters. But worked back and yeah. struck them both out. But that means you're throwing a lot of pitches. He's thrown uh, 12 pitches to get his two strikeouts. This battery starts with a strike. That's better. Mays, the big first baseman. Flew out to right his first at bat. Fouled back and out of play. Count goes no balls, two strikes. So he goes 3-0 to the first two batters. Now he gets this one 0-2. Let's hope he doesn't reverse it. Now throw him a bunch of balls <laughs> to end right. it up. Now the 0-2 pitch. Swing at a miss. Strike three as Hayden Moore comes in and strikes out the side. And we've played three and a half. Pearl leading 12 nothing. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. In times of joy, in moments of grief, we are there. When the world looks for truth, broadcasters come through, even when all else fails. Today, with more ways than ever to experience the moments that transform our lives, Americans still choose broadcast television and radio more than all other media combined. We are the local broadcasters of radio and television. The Mississippi Braves. Mississippi Braves 2013 baseball season is right around the corner. Don't miss all the excitement and action when the regular season begins on Thursday, April 4th. There's still some great seat locations for season tickets for all 70 home games or other ticket packages. Call the Trustmark Park box office at 888-BRAVES-4 or stop by the ballpark box office and reserve your season tickets, ticket packages, or individual game tickets right away. Opening night, April 4th, sponsored by the Mississippi Army National Guard. Make it every game. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262.
It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874. For all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs, you'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. The game was called after four, three and a half innings. The Pirates defeating the Wingfield Falcons by a score of 12 to nothing, improving to 5-0 in region play, 11-7 overall. I'm here now on the third base side with our PMN players of the game, brought to you tonight by Moss Creek Fish House and Sonic. It's Paxton Bounds and Michael Goodson. Michael, first off, starting pitcher tonight. Your first start for the varsity tonight. Michael, i got to ask you, when Coach said you got the ball, what was your thought? I'm going to come in and play hard. You did. You came in. You got out uh, everybody you faced. Nobody reached base against you. You had uh, three strikeouts out of the six batters. Uh, your thoughts and, and how you felt on the mound working with Zach Prince? Uh, it felt good. A little nervous at first, but then I got the hang of it and tried throwing strikes more. You seemed to be browning the strike zone the whole time, and that's one of the things we talked about. I don't think you were ever behind in the count. Uh, was that your focus, just throw strikes? If they hit it, you trust your defense behind you? Uh, yes, sir. Tell me what this does for you. I think you're a freshman, right? What this does for you as a freshman playing now for the varsity? More confidence in myself and come out and this my pitch. Just uh, throw strikes and my defense right behind me. Obviously, good job tonight. Congratulations. You're one of our PMN players of the game. Paxton Bounds, you were one for one at the plate. You had a hit by pitch and a uh, sack fly. Four RBI. Pretty good job at the plate tonight. You had to feel pretty good swinging the bat. Uh, it felt good. It's kind of hard going to get slow pitching, so you had to stay back and totally – have a different approach to the plate. Now, let me ask you, when, when you've got a pitcher like Michael on the on the mound, he didn't get a lot of opportunities for you to play defense. In fact, I don't think you ever fielded the ball. Uh, do you kind of say, hey, come on, let him hit it to me, let me play some defense? You do, but then again, you want everybody to get out. So, <laughs> so. I do want to ask you, Paxton, you've had a chance now to play in a lot of games and, and some things are really coming together for this team. We're 5-0 and now in region. We're, we've won four games in a row for the first time uh, since uh, right before spring break. We hadn't done it other than that since 8 9 This team's really playing good. Your thoughts about how we're feeling in the locker room right now? Uh, the intensity's up real good. I think we should continue playing like this and everything will work out. Good deal. Paxton Bounds, Michael Goodson, uh, PMN Players of the Game, brought to you by Moss Creek Fish House and Sonic. Y'all can exchange whichever one of those y'all two wants. You can fight over that. But congratulations, guys, our PMN Players of the Game for this game against Wingfield. Now we're going to look for our head coach, Kevin Barnett. Uh, I think I see him down there. When do y'all go grab Coach Barnett and bring him back this way? Thanks a lot, Paxton. Good job. Uh, the Pirates, again, a big victory tonight. We're going to get Coach Barnett, talk to him. Uh, actually, we're looking for him. We thought we saw him, but we don't. Uh, we may have to take – let's take a break. Uh, we'll take a commercial break. When we come back, I'll have head coach Kevin Barnett. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. In times of joy, in moments of grief, we are there. When the world looks for truth, broadcasters come through, even when all else fails. Today, with more ways than ever to experience the moments that transform our lives, Americans still choose broadcast television and radio more than all other media combined. We are the local broadcasters of radio and television. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball. I'm here with Craig Howard. He's working as the one of the coaches for the Pearl Pirates this year. Craig, first off, huge victory tonight, four in a row that we've won. We're now 5-0 and in region play. Your thoughts on where this team is and just the short time you've had a chance to work with them for the last couple of three weeks? Well, I'm completely uh, happy. You know, when we first got here, we didn't really know what our team had. You know, come back, we knew we lost some players. So we we're all kind of iffy, you know, didn't know what we had. But, you know, we started out on a few practices, and we got some talent. And it's starting to show. We're starting to figure out our team, figure out how to put lineups together, and uh, completely satisfied on how we'll look in the future. Michael on the mound tonight comes out 
uh, faces six batters, gets six batters out of freshman on the mound. Had to feel real proud of what he did tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, proud of all my pitchers. All three of them uh, freshmen today. And uh, can't complain about any of them. Uh, just glad we could give him some innings today. The only base runner was a hit by pitch. You got to go get on to him about that, right? Yeah, that's it. I'll go, I'll go <laughs> say something to him about that. But Good. other than that, can't, can't complain. Can't complain about today. Good deal. Craig Howard, assistant coach for the Pearl Pirates. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Justin Bennett will take it away upstairs, give you some stats. I'll rejoin him. We'll wrap up this game as the Pirates defeat the Falcons of Wingfield by a score of 12 to nothing. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. The Mississippi Braves. Mississippi Braves 2013 baseball season is right around the corner. Don't miss all the excitement and action when the regular season begins on Thursday, April 4th. There's still some great seat locations for season tickets for all 70 home games or other ticket packages. Call the Trustmark Park box office at 888-BRAVES-4 or stop by the ballpark box office and reserve your season tickets, ticket packages, or individual game tickets right away. Opening night, April 4th, sponsored by the Mississippi Army National Guard. Make it every game. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874 for all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs. You'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball. Pirates, big winners tonight, 12 to nothing over the Wingfield Falcons. Looking at some highlight stats for the Pearl Pirates. Zach Carter, one for three tonight. Alex Hutton, one for two. Parker Thurman, one for two. Paxton Bounds, our PMN player of the game. He was one for one with four RBIs. Jimmy Boyd, one for three with an RBI as well. Kenny Thomas had an RBI. Todd Jenkins had an RBI. Pirates really stepping out tonight from a pitching standpoint. Barber, he gets the loss tonight, went three innings, gave up 12 runs on seven hits, walked five, struck out one. For the Pearl Pirates, a combination of pitchers. Goodson came on, great, great start for him. Two innings pitched, three strike. Struck out three, didn't walk anyone. Moore came on in relief at the end, pitched one inning, Struck out three. He also hit one batter. But Pirates, big winners, 12 to nothing. 12 runs, seven hits, no errors for the Pirates. No runs, no hits. One error for the Wingfield Falcons. We'll be back to wrap it up after these messages on the Pirate Media Network. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. In times of joy, in moments of grief, we are there. When the world looks for truth, broadcasters come through, even when all else fails. Today, with more ways than ever to experience the moments that transform our lives, Americans still choose broadcast television and radio more than all other media combined. We are the local broadcasters of radio and television.
Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network tonight. The Pirates defeat the Wingfield Falcons by a score of 12 to nothing in uh, four innings, three and a half innings as the Pirates shut down the Falcons. Justin, one of the things that we talked about is the pitching tonight. And Michael Goodson comes out. He works two innings. He faces six batters. He gets all six batters out. He threw 16 pitches, 12 of those for strikes, four of those for balls, three strikeouts. He was our PMN player of the game. Uh, just an outstanding performance by the freshman pitcher. A, a great performance by the by the freshman pitcher. You know, he came in through strikes. That's all you can ask for him to do. Stepped up in a big way, you know, against a team that, that has had some struggles. But you've got to be impressed with his performance, and hopefully he can replicate that sometime down the road and come out and give the Pirates another quality start. Well, and then also we saw Lawrence and Hayden Moore both come in as well. And, again, no hits given up by any Pirate pitcher tonight. The only base runner was a hit by pitch by Moore. So a great job by the pitching staff tonight at the plate uh one of the things we mentioned during the game is you got to be careful about getting your timing on this type of pitching because right. this isn't the type of pitching you want your timing on no. when you go forward into the season because you're not going to see a lot of pitchers that are throwing their fastballs at 65 70 <laughs> miles an hour that's true most that's of true. them you're going to see up in the upper 70s to low 80s and if you all of a sudden time fastballs at 65 you're in trouble you're in trouble when you get to those 80s and so uh good thing that we didn't have to face them a whole lot more. I know that's another reason you take your Parker Thurmans and your Zach Carters and your Alex Huttons and your, your Dalton Solis, Dalton Sullivan. I could run down that whole starting lineup. Zach Prince, take those guys out. Don't get them used to that type pitching right. because Friday night you're going to play against a Macomb team that uh, is also looking for their first win in region play. They've got a chip on their shoulder. They want to come in and try to get a victory. We don't want to take a chance on going into that game flat and not being ready for what we're going to see. That's right. You're, you make a great point. You don't want to come into the next game flat. You came out. You did your business. You took care of business tonight, took care of this Wingfield team. You want to be able to come out against Macomb at Macomb, step up, play solid, and keep the winning streak going. You got four games in a row now that you've won, and you've got these young kids, these freshmen and sophomores that are seeing a lot of playing time, as we mentioned a moment ago. In fact, we ended after Jimmy Boyd came out when Hayden Moore went to the pitcher's mound, Nick Lawrence goes to shortstop, that, that you don't have anybody older than a sophomore on that entire field yeah. at that point in the ball game. This is experience that's going to be invaluable for these guys as they go forward. When they become juniors and seniors, these guys will have already played three years. Exactly. And, and into their fourth year, that, that experience is just going to play on for them, uh, and they're going to be able to draw back on this. And I think it's going to be for some great Pearl Pirate teams. Oh, a, absolutely. I mean, you, you and I, a few years from now, we're going to sit here and have a conversation and remember these opportunities these guys got. And that is going to only, only continue to drive these guys to get better. This experience, it's priceless, and it's an awesome opportunity for them and for this program to give these younger kids that opportunity because now and down the road, they're hungry for it now, and down the road it's going to pay off for the experience that they've gotten with real game experience. Macomb Friday night. The Pirates will travel to Macomb. It's a long trip. It's going to be at a 6 o'clock game. There won't be a JV game prior to that. Uh, that's a game that uh, you don't have to win it. Right. I mean, you're going to play them two more times. Obviously, you want to win it. You want to win all of them that you can this this point of the season especially. Uh, but I think it's important that the Pirates go down there uh, and, far as I'm concerned, establish themselves early like they did tonight. We scored six runs in the top of the first tonight, the bottom of the first. Go down there and establish yourself early. Get up early. I'm, I'm, I don't know who will be the starting pitcher Friday night. Uh, I've got a feeling that you'll probably go with your ace. You go with Zach Carter Friday, uh, get him on the mound first, shut them down. You may not leave him in but a couple innings, depending right. on how it's going. Uh, but I feel like you probably go with him. But whoever you go with, you want to give them a lead. You want to set – when they go to the mound in the bottom of the first, you'd love to have them a three, four, five-run lead. Get up early, get on top of McComb, and then do what you did tonight. Put it away. Right. And I think if the Pirates can go down there and establish that Friday night, then when we face Macomb again the next week on Thursday and Friday, Thursday here at home, Friday back in Macomb, then you've kind of laid a framework, laid a groundwork, if you will, for what you're going to do. And this team could really be sitting in the driver's seat now to be the number one seed in the region as we get ready to go to the playoffs in just a few weeks. Absolutely. That's what you want to do. You want to establish that. You want to, you want to get in their minds so that they're thinking, being the Macomb Tigers, this is a really good Pearl Pirate team. You know, we've got all this we got to fight against, to struggle against. And so that's exactly what you want to do. You want to come out. You want to demonstrate that, that, that you've got a good team. Jump out to an early, early lead. And just as you mentioned, put it away as early as you can it just makes everybody's lives a lot easier. I'm a little disappointed. 
at? The game went too fast. <laughs> I, I, today I sat down <laughs> and, and I put together all this stuff that we were going to talk about tonight for the playoff scenarios. Right, and, we never and, got and, to and, it. and they didn't play long enough for us to get into this. Uh, so we'll do this uh, next Thursday night when we when we <laughs> play. Right, that, that'll be back. the next time I'm on a broadcast. Right. Me uh, too. Because we're Friday, back. Greg Flynn will be handling the play-by-play duties down at Macomb. Saturday we'll be playing at Quitman, a doubleheader. We will not be broadcasting those games here on the Pirate Media Network. Tuesday night it'll be at Brookhaven. And I think you are doing that game. I think uh, me and – I have to look at my notes. You and somebody uh, are doing that somebody. game Tuesday right. at, at mm-hmm. Brookhaven. And then Thursday night I'll be back here. Justin will join me as we play Macomb for the second of the three games against him. And by then we will have a good picture of the playoff scenario mm-hmm. because if the Pirates win against Macomb Friday, if they beat Brookhaven Tuesday, uh, that pretty well locks up the number one seed in the playoffs, right. regardless of what you do the next two against Macomb right. because Macomb won't be able to catch you in the win column uh, regardless because right. they've lost to Brookhaven. So uh, Friday night at, Brook- at Macomb, Tuesday night at Brookhaven, critical games for the Pearl Pirates. Bottom line right now, the Pirates are in the driver's seat. I will go ahead and tell you this, which what that means is they'll get the weekend off for the play-in weekend, which is the uh, week- first weekend in May, for second, third, fourth of May. They get the weekend off. Uh, if they – excuse me, that's the weekend before that, 26th, 27th of April. Of April, the last uh, Is the April. play-in weekend, which puts them automatically in the first round of the playoffs, which is the second, third, and fourth of May. And if they're the number one seed out of our region, Region 6, we would face the two or three seed out of Region 7 or 8, depending on who wins their playoff uh, to get into the playoffs, their play-in games to get into the playoffs. So, in a nutshell, that's kind of what we're looking at right now, playoff scenarios by next Thursday night. We'll know what's going on for sure. So it's going to be a lot of fun as we take this young team uh, into the playoffs with the Pearl Pirates. That's right. You know, see how far these guys can go if they continue to improve like they've done so far. I, mean, I don't see why they won't. Keep continuing pr- to improve. Keep fighting for it. you got to like their chances going forward the rest of the season. We thank you for joining us tonight. It's been a quick broadcast. The game time was an hour and five minutes as the Pirates made quick work of the Wingfield Falcons by a score of 12 to nothing. Thanks to our sponsors that make this possible. Mississippi Bonding, Harvey's Fish Hut, Sign Mart, Hermetic Rush Services, City of Pearl, Sonic Drive-In, Alumni House, Moss Creek Fish House, and the Mississippi Braves. Thanks so much to our executive producer, Frank Cutton, our director and producer, Roy Harper, associate producer, Michael Brewer, and our engineer back at the studio, Greg Cuspid. Uh, camera operators on night to know were Hannah Cannon-Geyser and Carol Davis. I think Alan Dilly was in the trailer. I think so. I'm not sure if there were any other support crew in there or not. Uh, but if there were, thanks a lot. Justin, my color analyst, as always, appreciate it. Tonight's broadcast of Pearl Pirate Athletics is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, downloads, or copying of any type without the expressed written permission of the Pirate Media Network is strictly prohibited. Again tonight, the Pirates defeat the Falcons by a score of 12 to nothing. Next up will be McComb at McComb Friday night with a first pitch schedule for 6 p.m. Until then, I'm DP saying good night, everybody. And, man, that music was really loud.